This campus has the reputation of being the most beautiful campus in the nation, and I would have to agree. I came from Oregon. Oregon is rainy, cloudy, uh, cold, windy, you know, there's actually snow. And so being here is definitely an upgrade, you know, it's sunny California, it's nice, it's sunny. But during the winter time, it was still nice and sunny, and definitely that was it, it was just nice seeing the weather like that. It's the scenery. Uh, back at home, it's pretty dead. It's a desert. There's nothing really to look at. Uh, what I like most about being up here at PUC is the, probably the nature. Uh, you can get away from your studies and everything, and you can either stay on the beautiful campus and just have, you know, by the fountain, lay out and study, or you can hike on the back 40 or go to Linda Falls or... Especially during the springtime, it's just everything is green, you see all these flowers and the campus itself is just really beautiful. Um, and then I personally think that the people here are just really, really nice. When I came here my freshman year, I was the only one from Calexico and I didn't know anyone here and the only person that was from a ho hometown was graduating. So it was a different change, and just being here these past three years, I've already made all these different types of relationships with all of my friends. You know, the thing that I really noticed when I got on campus, everyone's friendly, especially in the dorm rooms. My RAs, they're the best. I have really made good bonds with them and the upperclassmen on my floor and the people that work at the desk. They're really encouraging. They're really people that I look up to and people that I want to be someday. Just being able to share a lot of experiences with people and you know these are the most like critical years in our lives and it's, it's really important to have these memories and build these friendships and you know, PUC has definitely done that for me. It's just been a blessing. It's become my home away from home. People would tell me a whole bunch of things about college and tell me everything you needed to know about college, but you can't really know what it's like until you experience it yourself. During that first week we were here, it was, it was strange not being in the same bed you've been in, not being in the same house you were in. Things really shifted and things really changed once you went to Fusion. People were in the same boat as you were. I mean, people were scared. People were like, they didn't expect what was going to happen. When we went to Fusion, everyone was comfortable after that because then they realized, hey, everyone else is also not knowing what's going on. And at Fusion, it was a great experience. It was really nice to get to meet um, different people from different backgrounds and not seeing the same faces that you grew up with, meeting different people. It was a really interesting experience. I've never really experienced anything like that in my life before. And just really emphasizing the spiritual aspect of what this campus is about. And I just was really, it just, I was just really enthralled by that. Fusion was a really nice time to be able to connect with God as well as the other students, the freshmen in the student body. Thank you.
UC has given me the opportunity to really take ownership of my faith, where I've been able to have that one-on-one -on -one time in a very peaceful place with God, whereas in the city, I wouldn't be able to do that. The rumble and tumble and all the noises, I wouldn't be able to have that experience. But as I've been able to come here, it, and it's my personal belief that our personal devotion is what's truly going to impact our spiritual life. Not, no one event or one function is going to do that. If I were to go to, say, a state college, my spirituality wouldn't be as it is right now. I hail from a public school, and so I'm not really aware of the whole um, Adventist education system dynamic that goes on. One thing that's definitely the most impactful thing about going here in PUC for me was the spiritual aspect. Like, definitely being exposed to Vespers, um, enjoying the Sabbath, really cherishing that, especially when you're studying a lot. You really connect well with God here. I mean, for me personally, I got baptized like the second week I got here. And it was just a tremendous experience before and now it's been a tremendous experience afterwards. Coming here has actually, I guess, converted me because I, I came to PUC as a Christian, um, but I was going to a Baptist church before. And once I came here, I kind of, you know, I was really open to learning new things and everything. I pretty much just started taking religion classes and, you know, having friends that were SDA and, and just going to all these, like, um, things that we're having, Bible studies, you know, Vespers programs, stuff like that. And my mind, my thinking, way of thinking kind of changed. Decided to go to a SDA church back home. And um, by the end of the summer, I was baptized. If we didn't have a constant relationship with Jesus, if it's just once in a while, here and there, in essence, we'd be fine. But there's something in our hearts that yearns for something, that needs something, that wants something. And that importance is, of course, is Jesus. When, when we experience Him, when we have this relationship with Him, everything else becomes second. It's important because we need it. It's important because that's the only thing that will make us happy. Father in heaven, we thank you and we praise you for this awesome conclusion to week of prayer, Lord. Uh, that's why we do this. We do this so that lives are changed, Lord, and we just pray uh, for, for Jesse and Emily, Lord, as they, they take this, this new walk um, in their lives. Well, we were at RA retreat. I was on piano, she was on guitar, and so we just started playing some chords. I asked Danielle, I was like, Danielle, you know, we should, we should make a, uh, a song, you know, let's write a song. You asked, what kind of song should we write? And I was like, happy song, sad song, love song. <laughs> and I was like, Jesus song, we should write like, a Jesus song. We, we were started, like, we started, and then, yeah. then you were like, wait one second, we gotta pray. So yeah. we prayed and next thing you know, we opened up the Bible and the verse that we found was uh, Ephesians, right? Because of the theme of this year being unity and one accord, um, it just kind of seemed like something that was of providence that we would have gotten to there in the Bible. Um, and so we just started writing and it was, it was really incredible, just the yeah. presence and the atmosphere in the room. Usually when I personally write songs, it takes me a while, but with this song, it it just came out, you know, and uh, our friend Emily was there with us and um, she helped us write our song too, you know, she was she giving did. us ideas. So it's not just one of us who wrote this song. It's made an impact just not because of, not only the lyrics, but because like we as students wrote it, you know. Yeah, it's like the fact that there is like that potential within the within the student body is is such a representation of what they're capable of. I think that's the thing best about when I write a song is that it can, my words aren't just, you know, blah, 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 la, 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 like the words you hear on the radio today. It's like something that you can relate to or, you know, just being in one of four that this path that he's put us, put us on isn't, it's not easy, you know, and you always need someone there. And that's, I just hope that that gets across and not the point that, like, oh, we're cool, we wrote a song, but we don't even, you know, we don't even care about that. We just want, you know, just the message of God's blessings to show through, you know? Absolutely. We have been chosen. 
chosen to heal the broken and the weak. We stand together, serving our Maker as He leads. The calling of the chosen is harder. Service for me means caring for someone else without expecting anything in return. I'm not going to serve somebody just because, oh, it's the Christian thing to do and it's the right thing for me to do, but I'm going to care for somebody because they need it, because there's a need and I want to meet that need regardless of what I get in return, just simply for the sake of doing it. And working with Fabio in the missions department, he's always got some opportunity that are available for those who want. With the Clear Lake Project, um, PUC has partnered with the Clear Lake Church and we've gone out into the community. It's a very, very poor community, a lot of alcohol and a lot of um, drug use and a lot of homeless people. I, I think the count was about 180 that are just living on in the outskirts of like a Walmart and, uh, and a different type of shelter. And, and there's these people that are just living in conditions that if we were to see on PUC's campus, we would do something about it right now. What the Clear Lake Project is, is it's an opportunity to raise awareness for us to truly serve and help people right in our, right, right here, right in our home in Northern California, who really, really need it. Practical, you know, tangible help right now. We don't have to go to another country to fight poverty. We, we have it right here in our own home. And so the Clear Lake Project has been able to give students opportunities to help the homeless by feeding them and by providing for their needs. Uh, growing up here has been, it's been a growing experience to say the least. You know, sometimes there's a little bit of uh, 
difficulty and you learn, you know, you learn from your mistakes and experiences and what have you. My name is Jairam Notstein. I am a junior at PUC. As far as uh, the trails go, you know, the trees make it challenging in a good way to kind of navigate around them and it, it's, for a rider, it's just one of the best places to ride. So the back 40, you know, it's diverse. It has smooth, gradual sections, and then it has very steep, treacherous sections. It can pertain to a lot of skill levels. As far as the nature goes, it's beautiful. You know, there, there's more tree and dirt instead of concrete and building, you know, so it's all integrated into one giant campus. I grew up in the outdoors, and this place is very familiar to me, you know. I've grown up here about over nine or ten years, so as far as people go, they treat you nicely here, and everybody's pretty genuine and sincere. I wouldn't take anything back. It's, it's made me who I am now, and I'll continue learning, but it's, uh, it's been home. It's been home to me. What got me hooked into flying was probably just the freedom, being able to see um, all the beauty you know, was around you from a higher perspective. I was 13 when I got first introduced to flying. My parents gave me an introduction flight uh, for my birthday and I was hooked since. I was, I don't know, I was basically screaming on the inside, but as soon as I took off, I was, I was so excited and I was praying. I was like, dear, dear Lord, don't let me fall, don't let me crash, don't let me. Um, you know, die kind of thing, and then when I was up in there, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and it was, it was awesome. And my first landing was also one of the most terrifying things. My instructor was at the end of the runway with a radio, kind of talking me through it, making sure um, I was okay, but it was perfect. My instructor recorded it, and probably better than my landing now, which is sad, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, it was really terrifying, but it was after that, like, it was pretty much, pretty much all worth it, so. Uh, my time here at PUC was definitely worthwhile. Um, while it was only three years, it was definitely, um, it was definitely awesome to, to be able to fly at different, a different airport and different airplanes, but while uh, meeting a ton of new people and also having um, you know, a bachelor's to mark off, it was, it was great, it's definitely worth it. That, that first week of school, it was definitely a huge shift from high school to college. It was really good shifting from the norm to something new. And PC, they were really accommodating. It's, it's definitely a transition in your life, you know, just from high school to being on your own. Like definitely I'm like far away, like I'm a good hundred miles away from my home and I'm here in college to build my future career. It was just a refreshing start, really. Academic-wise, it would have to be probably the interaction with teachers because um, if, you, if I would have gone to a public school and I was considering going to a UC school, you don't even get to meet your professors. And if you get lucky, you get to know the TA. The classroom setting, I would have to say it's really comfortable for me because I've gotten to know all of my classmates because um, my classes aren't that big. And especially now that I'm taking upper division classes, there's probably no more than 15 students in the classroom. So that's really nice. 
academic wise, you know, it's a bit challenging. Um, certain classes, especially for you know a science major, uh, taking all these science courses and stuff, it's it's difficult, but it really prepares you for the future. We're here in college because we're here to get an education, and with that, your objectives have to be firm, but your approach has to be flexible, and it's just how well you can adapt. For my major, they're really small. For most of my classes I don't have, there's no more than 15 students in the classroom, so that's really nice. I think the biggest obstacle for me personally is uh, the classwork. Your professors sometimes think that their class is the only class that you have, and they'll assign uh, homework, they'll assign tests, and... You know, like, we're, we're expected to be a full-time student, while at the same time have social lives with our friends and you know we got to pay the bills and so we got to work somewhere and balancing all of that while trying to sleep at the same time you know for any college student I think it's difficult especially here at PUC where we have to pay so much. You know. Being able to manage your time um, with everything that you have I like taking a lot of responsibilities and I sometimes seem to overwhelm myself we have extra expenses as being pilots training. Uh, we pay for the gas, pay for the planes, the instructors. So it's just a lot of extra expenses. Procrastination. That's the hardest thing. Knowing that you have something due, but you just don't want to do it. Just balancing social life, sleep, studying, spirituality. It really is a challenge. <laughs> prayer, a lot of prayer. Um, Basically, I have to learn to say no. Prioritizing your time for different things. I don't have time to do the good things anymore. I have the time to do the essentials. And I think that's the biggest thing. I, some weeks, you know, I, I go ahead and have fun and splurge a little bit. And some weeks, I have to buckle down and, and do the studies. It's just, you have to learn to sacrifice certain things. There's just so much to do and so little time. Once you find it, you're, you're golden pretty much from there. Thank you so much for being older brothers and older sisters to me in my experience at PUC. Next year, as I become a junior, I want to hopefully follow in your footsteps and be a mentor to the freshmen that are coming in as you were a mentor to me. Thank you. You really inspired me to be a better person and do good on this campus. You guys as a whole are a true inspiration to the underclassmen. You guys inspire us to become better people every single day by your attitude, by the way you treat one another. And I want to continue with your legacy. I want to help make PUC be that family, be that campus that people are so happy to be in. Well, I just want to say that every single year they've, they've made such a difference and I feel that they're setting examples to follow. I think the class of 2013 is very inspiring. Yeah, the class of 2013, they're definitely an inspiration. They have many years of experience, just a whole lot of trials that they went through, but, you know, they handled it and they pulled through. Just by the grace of God, they managed to pull through. And they're really wonderful people in the end. They're just, they really, they really are role models to look up to. Definitely want to say I'll miss this school and this airport and, and all the people around, but don't worry, uh, you'll see me. I'll be one of those people, alumni, that comes back all the time because I don't have a real life yet. <laughs> and so you can't get rid of me yet, but um, definitely going to miss this place. I can speak for, you know, anyone who's graduating that um, just to stay strong in, in your walk with God and uh, in your studies in the future. You know, just show God's love through yourself in any way that you can. Be yourself and be your best. You know, if you aren't the best, you're your best. And 
that's the most important thing because everything else will fall into place right afterwards. Goodbye. <laughs> Good luck. Keep your eyes on him. Don't watch your feet. Watch him. Don't watch your feet. Watch him. Good night. Good luck. God bless. Graduate! Almost. Not yet. <laughs> I know. <All> right. <laughs>